Welcome back. Thank you so much. I hope this subject is of interest. I thought it might be of interest. It's about spikes. Cut them, don't cut them. Well, I do cut mine sometimes, not all the time. And in this case, in this video, I want to be addressing the spikes that I'm cutting off and why. And here is my beautiful Leodoro Sweet Memory. First bloom of the season, bringing in the summer blooming, kick-starting their time. However, these two spikes are new. They grew over the winter, which is great. We know that most summer bloomers have sequential blooming spikes. So all these should be extending and bringing out more blooms. And that's why we don't cut them off. So I'm going to be cutting these two spikes off, even though they appear to be extending. And the reason I'm gonna do that is to give the orchid a little bit of a break. This bloom is much bigger and more fragrant than any of the blooms that came out of the spikes last year, these older spikes. And that just tells me that every once in a while, a spike is spent, it's done. And you can still get all the blooms out of it, but it's also a good time sometimes just to refresh an orchid, give it a break, it's pushed out two new spikes. Last year, the spikes weren't that impressive of a bloom size. And bit by bit, it can get tired. And that is why I'm not going to wait for these spikes to bloom. Because another factor is I have plans for this orchid this year. It's going to get a repot. And I don't want it to be putting any energy into these spikes at this point in time. For that reason, smaller blooms, not as fragrant. They're getting a bit straggly. They're looking a bit tired. I'm gonna take them off even though the orchid has not absorbed them of her own accord. Her characteristics are such that they would not absorb that quickly if enough fertilizer is provided, which I do. And then it just exudes a lot of energy. So that's why they're coming off. I know this is not a popular thing to do, and I understand the reasonings behind why it is not, but I do sometimes take some very radical decisions thinking ahead with regards to my season. What is my orchid doing? Is it necessary to intervene ahead of time as part of the preparation process for the orchid to be a little bit more healthy in her performance and actually perform according to what she is capable of instead of wanting to be selfish to see blooms all the time and as much as possible. So it is kind of a humid day today. If it were a little bit drier today, I would not be putting any cinnamon on because the cinnamon is so close to the roots and I don't want to desiccate the roots, but it is a humid day. So there's a, gonna be a bit of cinnamon on the end of the cuts here. If I can get it to stick. Incredible that it is so humid and my cinnamon won't stay where I want it to. But yeah, so there's the Phalaenopsis, the reason behind. I do the same for the complex hybrids, same principle. If the orchid isn't doing well, and just because of its nature, if it's stressed, I want to make sure that I unstress it. I don't want stress blooms. I want pretty healthy blooms. And that means forfeiting spikes. A while ago, I found it very difficult to cut spikes, thinking the next one will be in 12 months. But I have seen results personally from how an orchid has performed by letting the spike go and thinking of it long-term as opposed to what I want short-term. So I just flushed off where I think I spilled some cinnamon on the roots to protect them. First example, why I cut a sequential blooming spike off a summer bloomer. 
And I think it makes a lot of sense, at least in my books. I feel more comfortable. It's not a nice task, but I feel more comfortable. This bloom proves to me that we need to get a little bit of a rejuvenation going. Oh, and she smells so good. Next example, coming right up. Pretty obvious here. This is my Angraecum Crestwood Tomorrow Star. Beautiful blooms in the winter, so happy. Clearly, a spent spike. I let that one go and absorb itself. For aesthetic purposes, I take it off, but only for aesthetic purposes. There's no need to fuss about these spikes when they're spent, if you don't mind them. And in many cases out in nature, these spikes will just stay on the orchid and deteriorate slowly. But in my case, I'm here and I like to take these old spikes off for aesthetic purposes. I have another example though. Here's my Zygopetalum Trozy Blue. Thank you so much for identifying it for me. I really appreciate it. It was a no ID up until now. Finally, I can address spikes on this orchid. It has taken a while, but you can see it's producing a new growth. Woohoo! Maybe two. Woohoo! And it hasn't absorbed the spikes yet. It's um, starting to. The rest is green. And ideally, I would leave this spike on until it's completely absorbed. Plenty of energy in this spike, but I want to show you about the growth. I am not quite comfortable with how the spike is so close to the growth. I don't know how long it's going to take for the spike to be absorbed. It's been a while and only this has happened. Meanwhile, the growth is going to be chugging along at a rate of knots growing, and then it's going to cover the spike, and then I'm going to have difficulty getting in there. So with my training of growth and how I want my orchids to stay contained in the pot and not get too lanky, this spike right here is also going to be an impediment to this growth trying to get snug up towards the next bulb. So my plan is in this example to go in and cut the spike now while I can still get my secateurs in there. And secateurs is what I will need. Now, if you see some brown stuff coming off of my secateurs, they've just been treated with their oil so that they don't get, you know, the rust isn't so predominant after my fusarium stint. I bleached them and uh, they struggled or they suffered a little bit for it. But no risk when it comes to sterilizing after fusarium. So if you see a little bit of oil pouring out and you'll know why. So I'm just gonna get rid of this little sheath bracked protective thing out here. We'll watch for that new growth down there. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can see how far can I go without blocking the view. My hands, sorry about that. So this is pretty much just for me to let that growth come out snug towards the next bulb. And I has, have a plenty of space to get all the way down there. Let me see about this part here. Now it has been raining, but this one is not exposed to the rain because I don't want to risk the new growths. So this one's not getting inundated with water or anything. Whereas my Zygonesia is. I will not be putting cinnamon on that. And they say to go to leave one node here because that is like an automatic callus, but not really in this case. There's nothing that would actually break off automatically at this node. So this is not a callus. So I'm going to go as low as possible beyond that. I'm going to come in at an angle from the top and get rid of that spike. Comme ça. And now it is a nice clean cut. It is right up 
against that bulb, the spike itself is not going to interfere with how the new growth grows, pushing it into a situation where I don't want it. And I'm going to leave the second spike on, let the orchid absorb it on her own accord. I will not be putting cinnamon on that because of that new growth. And it is breezy enough that will dry off, no problems. My reasonings why and when I take off a spike that has not been absorbed by the orchid. Let's get another example. Reed stem epidendrum, something along those lines. This is the cross of both of them, our epidendrum René Marquez. This one is crossed with Dimarandra imarginata, and this one is crossed with Brassavola digbiana. Now, I only ever have had spikes coming out of the top of a new growth, and never beyond that not down here, not there, just around the top. The other ones you can see here is the spent spike from last year. It's starting to absorb itself. This is 12 months old. Here is a spike that developed from the growth of my René Marquez Brassavola cross. And it, this one developed during the winter. Its initial attempt through the winter, it blasted all the blooms. That's temperature based, too much too many low temps, too many nights in the low temps, not a problem. But you can see, for example, here, I only cut the tip off because I didn't want any problems with those buds and the happy sap attracting some kind of a winter pest. So I cut the tip off and here it's starting to branch. So if you have these kind of crosses, especially Epidendrum, Rena Marquez and anything like that, do not cut the spike off all the way to the back. The fact that my spike from last year didn't branch is a shame, but hey, I'm only going to cut the tip off until I see that the whole spike has been absorbed. But this one can also start to branch and throw out another shoot of blooms after these have bloomed out. So be very careful if you have these not to go in too radically too soon with these spikes, if they're still green, chances are there will be a branch and more blooms. I have had on and off success blooming these guys. Last year was good. Here I am just checking now to see that this is all the way spent, that I can take it off. But they're extremely volatile in my climate. Any little bit of temperature change, then the spike will abort the blooms. But it's always of interest to not cut the spike chances are you'll get another branching. We'll see what happens with this one. I doubt it, but you never know. So that's why I don't cut the spikes off these crosses, just to be on the safe side. We'll see if these will bloom out. Meanwhile, they take forever. The spike will appear, and then four months later, it'll bloom, and then only with three or four blooms. Big, big orchids. I mean, I like them, but if I had known then what I know now, they would probably not be in my collection, but here they are. The stronger they get, the more gross they will grow, and then the more the spike will actually branch. So it's a waiting game. But this is an example of sequential blooming, even though it doesn't look like it. I have another example. <laughs> my favorite example here are also tolumnias. You can see here I've had a spike, and I'm a little bit further away than I can't point but you can see the dried out spike on the top left, how it's been absorbed. And then it's branched at the base there. I had two more blooms and it's branching again underneath the first branch. So Tolumnia spikes do not cut off, not even the tip, because here's what happens if you just cut the tip off. You see that spike there? I cut the tip off just to clean it up and the whole spike deteriorated. So it, they don't like that. If it's going to branch, it's going to branch of its own accord. Just leave the brown tip on the front and see what happens. And don't be pedantic OCD like me and think, well, I'll just cut the tip off and let it branch because the spike is gonna say, okay, that's fine, I'm done. And I could have avoided that. Another thing of course is if the tolumnia is weak and it's trying to bloom, 
then maybe you want to see the blooms. Uh, don't let it branch. Cut that spike off and let the tolumnia recover. But in this case, I had an okay tolumnia. She could have branched if she had wanted to, if I wasn't trying to be tidy. So don't do that. Beautiful, beautiful dendrobium berry odor. Still chugging along, although every day now I'm taking about 10 flowers out, just nipping them out. But um, yeah, spikes galore. And slowly but surely, there will only be sticks sticking out of the top of the orchid. But I wanted to show you a spike that we've been following. If you've been here long enough, then you know we've been following keikis as well. Here is that spike that is producing roots and has hallmarks of a keiki. Whereas here's a spike, as you can see at the base, there is no bulging at the base. So that's how you can tell the difference regular spike, just in case you have not seen the other videos. Regular spike here, spike that has finished blooming with a bulge at the base, producing roots. Cakey. Now, no cutting, in my opinion, here of any spikes on the berry odor that are green. I mean, spent spikes here will stay green for quite some time, but the berry odor will absorb her old spikes really quickly, so it isn't an unsightly sight for that long. However, when it comes to an example like this, just because it's got roots and you think you can pot it up, this is a spike. It has no leaves at all. Whereas here's a keiki that is blooming. This is a keiki right here. And it has roots, but it's got leaves. So I, A, do not cut any spent spikes off a berry odor, even if they have no blooms on them for as long as they are green. And secondly, in a case like this, I don't cut that off or take it off until there's a new growth coming at the base, which will provide some leaves for photosynthesis. If I took this off right now, it would just perish, no chance. If I took this one off in comparison, because it's got leaves and roots, it's gonna be fine. So this is an example of where I don't go in and cut spikes. Even if they are not keikis, I let the orchid absorb all her green spikes, and then it just looks like a little bit of a forest of sticks, but it's, it doesn't take that long, maybe four or five weeks when a spike is depleted, that it starts to dry out. So beware, if you've got a case like this, do not cut it until you see a new growth coming and let that develop and mature on the plant before you take it off and try to propagate it. And with that, I've got one more example. Ta-da! <laughs> My Maxima. Unfortunately, but I understand, a lot of energy went into this blooming, but unfortunately, these blooms didn't last long. So instead of cutting the spike because there's energy in here, I just pop the blooms off and wait for that part to dry out. However, here, even though I still have color and I don't like doing this one bit, I am going to pop the blooms off because if the orchid is not able to hold her blooms, let's say for the last, it should be three and a half weeks, we didn't have hot temperatures, then, you know, clearly she's struggling. And this is all energy consumption right here. But you see, I have a seed pod right here. And I want that seed pod to hold on and mature and not take the orchid down at the same time, just because I am really, really going to miss the blooms. So again, for the health and the sake of the orchid, I have to make this decision. They are spent anyway, I tell myself that. The orchid also lost a few leaves in the back here quite quickly. She was repotted while in sheath last year because roots were growing and I needed to respect the timing of the roots as opposed to wondering if I'm going to forfeit bloom. So I kind of got the best of both worlds. I shouldn't be more greedy than I was. She bloomed. Now it's time to focus on a new growth, new roots, and I want to maintain let me get this up. 
I want to maintain the seed pod. This is energy consumption of the highest order. So a few spent blooms taken off a little bit too soon is better than forfeiting the health of the orchid plus a pollinated seed pod. That's pretty much some of the criteria that I look for when I walk around my collection and how and when they bloom, how long they bloom, and why I take off spikes when I do, even though it could be a sequential bloomer of a Phalaenopsis, or in some cases, a complex fowl, I will take a developing spike off as well, just for the health of the orchid. And then seeing how is the orchid performing in general, and can I help it along a little bit so that it will actually pull through and have the energy to grow a new growth, which is fundamental here. I need some new roots. The roots in here are fine, but she's not anchored in. Plus a seed pod. So my personal preferences of removing blooms a little bit premature, even if it's just two days, <laughs> for the sake of what I'm trying to do here long-term, it's better. I hope this was of interest to you. I don't know, I just had this moment. I was going through my collection and I just was doing some maintenance and I thought, hang on a second, I can pull through some orchids and talk about why I do the things with my spikes when I do them. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, or even if you just have your own methods of why you do what you do, share them with me in the comments below. I'd be super interested. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you again. Take care and stay safe. Bye.